this is the Onefinity Journeyman X50 CNC machine. A professional grade CNC kit that is perfect for anyone looking to increase their output without sacrificing their intricate woodworking skills. It can cut and engrave a wide variety of materials like wood, plastic and aluminum, and much more, some of which we'll be testing out today. This machine has a large cutting area of 48 inches by 32 inches, large enough to create signs and furniture. In this review, we'll be looking at the wall-mounted option and putting it to the test with a variety of materials and bits. So let's get started. Welcome back to Space Age Tech, where we look at the tech that pushes the limits. We'll begin by unboxing the unit and taking a look at some of the specs. This first box contains our X-axis rail and Z slider. This is our low profile Z slider. It features chrome plated hardened steel linear shafts, as well as precision fast travel ball screws. Our next box contains the Y-axis rails and some other components. It features chrome-plated hardened steel shafts that are very high quality. They also included this personalized QC test board. This added a very nice personal touch and it really showcased what the machine can do right from the beginning. You gotta fall in love with clean lines on this board. Let's also take a closer look at the joypad. You might wonder why we need this. The joypad wirelessly controls the X, Y, and C motion during jobs. You can also toggle between four different speed settings on your Onefinity machine. Pretty cool. This unit comes with a 10.8 inch high def touch display, which means you can operate the machine independently of your computer. This is the controller. Here's where we'll connect our power, display, and other peripherals. You'll also notice that there's an emergency stop switch because, well, always safety first. It goes without saying that you should protect your eyes and avoid inhaling dust, even though we do have a dust collection system, which we will showcase later. And this is our X-axis. Onefinity has avoided stretchy belts and high maintenance lead screws in favor of this fast travel precision ball screws, which also require a lot less maintenance. Then we have our CCW frame that secures from above. For the most interesting part of this setup, we have the Onefinity wall mount system. We wanted to mount the Journeyman X50 on the wall to save space in our shop. This is of interest if you have a shop with a garage or a smaller space, since this machine is quite large and can take up some very precious real estate if laid flat, which is also an option. But we needed to make sure we were smart about the layout. And perhaps if you have the same challenge and someday aspire to fit your car in your garage, this might be a great solution. And here is the final assembly. The assembly itself was pretty simple. As mentioned before, the rails were pre-assembled. The CCW frame took the longest to assemble because you have to put together the panels, but overall it only took about a couple hours. We won't be doing an assembly video today. There are other resources from Onefinity and other YouTube channels that can help guide you along in the assembly process. Instead, we'll focus on putting various materials and bits to the test. Before we get started, we need to surface our spillboard with the SP Tool Spoilboard Surfacing Bit. This is to ensure an even work surface. You'll need to do this periodically to maintain a smooth work surface. To create our test files, we use Autodesk Fusion 360, since we also use it for 3D design. 
but there are many options out there. Some of them are VCar Pro or Carveco Maker. And now we're ready to start testing. We'll begin with wood. And right out of the gate, we have our first casualty. We fastened our test piece using X fasten tape, but two pieces were just not sufficient. Learn from our mistakes. We either need more tape or clamps to secure the piece in place. So let's start over. Just a quick note here, these will be rough cuts without finishing passes and no ball mill to even out the stepping. Also, this is not necessarily high quality material, so we're not expecting stellar results. This is half inch plywood. We're engraving on the bottom of the sheet with SP tool, carbide end mill, 60 degree bit. On the top half, we are carving a crater with the speed tool quarter inch shank upcut spiral bit. Here's our results for the first pass. We are getting some inconsistencies at the top where we actually cut through the wood. Plywood is not a homogeneous consistency as seen by the layers, so that may have something to do with it. In any case, more testing would be needed. The bottom engraving of our Celtic knot looks pretty good. Again, this is without a finishing pass to smooth it out. Overall, pretty good results. For our second test, we use half inch cedar. This time we use clamps to avoid failures. This is after we realized that tape was not working out very well. This is a much nicer result in this material. You can appreciate the shapes as well as the stepping on the surface area and definitely the Celtic knot is much smoother. Remember, these two tests have the same bits. The difference is the material. For our next test, we have half inch redwood. And we are still using the same two bits. Unfortunately, we engraved a little too deeply on this one because there's a slight warp in the wood. To avoid this, you can plane the surface of the wood before running the job. This would give you the best results possible. Now we're doing half inch dyed redwood for contrast. Same material as the previous test, but with a dark dye. We are using clamps on this test also, but we did experience some movement of the board. For the most part, we came out with a pretty nice result. Especially our Celtic knot looks very sharp and neat. Next, we tried 3 8 inch cork, a material we usually use with engraving. Let's see how it turns out. The burn you see here on the bottom is from a laser engraving test so we can go ahead and ignore it. You can somewhat appreciate the engraving here, although perhaps this would need to be painted to, or dyed to see more contrast. Now let's take a look at one and a half inch thick redwood. For this test, we used a different bit. We're using the Speed Tool 14411 Ball Nose Carbide End Mill. We were very happy with this result. It could be much smoother with a finishing pass or more steps, but that process would take longer. Also, we were happy that the tape did not give out this time. Let's test some plastics. First, we'll do half inch HDPE. We're using the ball mill to engrave some craters. We were happy with this result. The craters turned out pretty good. We do have a small hole in the middle, but that was pre-existing. Let's take a look at half inch polycarbonate. This time we'll try to make a water drop. For this test, the temporary wasteboard slipped. So we still need a better solution for clamps. Here's the result. You can see we were off to a great start. You can see we had some very nice ripples forming our water drop. Unfortunately, when the wasteboard gave out, it created this nix and dent. Let's move on to quarter inch HDPE. This time we're using the Speed Tool Zero Flute bit. 
This result was very nice. All the cutouts turned out great. There were no accidents. It was just perfect. Now let's try to engrave on quarter inch black polycarbonate. We had high hopes for this one since our last test was amazing. Unfortunately, the polycarbonate melted and wrapped around the carving bit 60 degrees, making these swirls. For our next test, we'll try engraving on quarter inch ABS. We had some pretty good results here, although not as nice as the HDPE. Let's continue testing some plastics. This time, we'll use 1 8 inch black acrylic. We had some pretty good results here. You can see the cutting and engraving was very smooth. Now for the test of fire, let's try some metals. First, we'll try quarter inch 6061 aluminum plate. On this test, the dust boot fell off, making a terrible mess. We used two bits to create this coin. To engrave, we used the 60 degree B bit and to cut the Speed Tool Zero Flute bit. We had some pretty nice results. For our next test, we'll try quarter inch aluminum and we'll be doing a ball mill carve. Unfortunately, we carve too deeply as you can see. For the last test, we'll try quarter inch pure copper. And as you can see, our design turned out pretty nice. So now that we've learned a few things about this machine and the setup in general, we'll go through some of the upgrades and accessories for our setup. Please see the links in the description if you're interested in any of these accessories and upgrades. The first thing we learn is that we need better clamps. So we set out on a mini project to create them. We wanted to make sure the clamps protected the expensive bits from breaking, so we needed the screws to be below the spoil board level. This is a 1 inch HDPE sheet. We'll use it to make our very own low profile bit safe clamps. This material is very rigid and easy to work with. It was also relatively inexpensive compared to clamps and can protect your investment from damage. For example, when a bit hits a metal clamp screw, it can not only break the bit, but it can also destroy the router and other parts, which would be very expensive. We used several bits to complete these clamps and they turned out pretty nice. Here you can see the concept. For our second upgrade, we switched to a RAM tablet mount. This mount is much more stable with a wider range of motion and protects the tablet from damage. For our next upgrade, we switched to a sweepy dust boot, which works very well. We also noticed that some of the hose attachments reduce noise significantly, which is always a plus. And finally, our biggest upgrade was a dust collection system from DeWalt. The Stealth Sonic Vacuum is much quieter than a traditional dust collection system and the DeWalt Dust Separator works just as well as the Oneida Dust Deputy. This removes all dust and keeps the vacuum empty and clean. Now let's take a closer look at all of our tests. This was our 1.5 inch thick redwood. We were very excited about this result. We can see smooth carving all throughout. A finishing pass would have made it perfect. We have half inch redwood. For the crater, we used our speed tool quarter inch upcut bit. You can see it did a great job on the stepping. But we'll have to plane our wood to avoid cutting too deeply into the board. For the engraving of this Celtic knot, we use the Speed Tool Carbide End Mill. The engraving turned out pretty nice. We also tried this half inch cedar. We are using the same tools as our previous test, but you can see the result is much better. So you can see how the type and quality of materials affect your result. You can see how adding these contracts helps to improve your result. 
let's take a look at our plywood. We are still using the same tools, but we definitely got the worst result on plywood. It was our very first test, but also the consistency and quality of these materials is not as great as the others. Our last test in this category was a 3 8 inch cork. As you can see, we were easily able to engrave on this material, but because there's not much of a shade difference, it's hard to tell. We also try MDF white marker board. It can definitely be used for signs and decorations. In the plastics category, we tried half inch HDPE. We used a ball mill to create these craters. Here is our half inch polycarbonate water drop. We experienced some movement on the wasteboard when doing this test. But overall, we were very pleased with this test results. The ridges are nice and smooth. For our next test, we engraved quarter inch black polycarbonate. We experienced some melting of the material due to the heat and friction created. This is not necessarily a deal breaker, it just means we need to fine tune the settings. Our next test is 1 8 inch black acrylic. Both cutting and engraving this material turned out pretty nice. One of our best results was a quarter inch HDPE. You can see all our cuts were beautifully executed. In comparison to ABS, the HDPE was much cleaner. And lastly, let's take a look at our metals. This is our quarter inch aluminum. We were able to both engrave and cut this material pretty nicely. It would only need a finishing pass to create a smoother effect. And finally, we have our quarter inch copper. We were pretty happy with the ripple effect on this material. So, what did you think? We are super excited of all the possibilities with the CNC machine. We found that Onefinity Journeyman X50 was easy to set up and they performed well with many of the materials. This beginner-friendly CNC machine is pretty affordable and easy to use. We'll be reviewing this and other amazing technology in our upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps our channel grow.